Uh, okay. We're going to start with test force number three. Alex, please uh, start. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to present, but I don't don't see how can how can start the presentation. You have a share button, green share in the bottom of your screen. Or you do command shift S. Let's start with Alex here. Let's start with Alex. Uh, Okay. All right, guys. I guess I'll uh, tell you about some uh, blockers that we had to resolve in order to start the releasing process that we didn't have for or over over a month on Android. All right. Let me see how to share the screen. Right. Can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so we so already started the preparation for the next next cycle. Um, all right, out of the most exciting, um, now we have the ability to customize the favorites icon per cell style, per family, uh, as opposed to before where we had a hard-coded uh, drawable for the icon. I guess it's it's a nice neat feature. Uh, we resolved a lot of different uh, bugs, and I guess most of them came from the misconfiguration. Uh, Atanas had to step in and help us with um, the. The main were uh, the issue with the Firebase on the production, where the apps wouldn't uh, would crash in the first load, trying to connect Firebase, and thus basically we would lose the ability to report with Firebase. Uh, and another one was the support for KitKat devices, uh, where we we would try. <clears throat> I'm sorry where we would try to use the SSL uh, connection, which is basically not secure anymore. Uh, those are the two main ones. Uh, there's a few small fixes uh, regarding the plugin screens. And uh, well, I guess it's fair that I had to resolve them since I probably introduced them in the first place. Um, yeah, well, a lot of uh, duplicated issues that I see. So maybe we can work on better reporting the issues. So unless you guys have any questions, that would be it for my side. Thanks. Yeah, I would just say one thing. Alex resolved during the cycle probably like 15 issues plus the help of Atana. So we had a lot of issues that uh, we decided to deal with from critical before that, and also some uh, new issues that occurred during this uh, cycle. So thank you, Alex. Alex, is Israel is ready? Yes, I am ready, I can present. Alex, you are probably muted. No. Gavri, we cannot hear him if he's there in, uh, next to you. Can you see my screen? You can hear him? Okay. Yeah, sorry. I'll try to switch, but it's okay. Uh, so I'm, um, uh, I want to start with the bugs that were, uh, that were resolved on this uh, cycle. 
uh, one of them that uh, uh, was uh, that took more time than than, uh, that it's, than uh, usual is this one that has uh, some uh, uh, gray uh, part of the screen uh, that was related to the banners and to the screen that that wasn't resized uh, after the banner was presented. So this uh, was resolved. Uh, actually, the, there were um, about, uh, I don't remember exactly, but uh, about 10 or 15 of them that uh, that uh, was handled on this uh, SDK. So I will not over, uh, not go not over all of them, but uh, uh, this one was uh, um, one of the interesting ones. And um, there uh, were also some uh, small issues with the, uh, uh, like with the sync button, uh, um, uh, white uh, white uh, strip or something like this, but not uh, not too much interesting. Um, that's all about the bugs. I can uh, go to the next uh, and explain you about the um, the tasks that that were completed on on this SDK on on this. Uh, uh, cycle uh, the SDK 10.2.0 uh, uh, was released yesterday, and it uh, contains uh, one of the tasks that uh, I uh, partially worked on on the previous uh, cycle and and finished on this one, and that was related to the push notifications and the. Uh, um, and the ability to send the notifications to the debug and release apps. And um, we actually uh, not uh, uh, not supposed to wait for um, the app to, to be released in the store to be able to, or to test flight, to be able to test the, uh, the push notifications. And it is now can be done uh, on the debug uh, build. Um, I can show you the uh, wait a second this one. So um, uh, I will show the example of how, how it works. It, it is actually uh, being enabled on the um, on the plugin uh, when we are selecting the um, when uh, we are selecting the. Well, I can see. And um, I can't see it. just a second. Okay, um, on the plugin level, we can select the option to 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 create this uh, uh, this uh, push notifications for for uh, in enterprise build. And uh, it will create the app with this uh, functionality enabled, and it it will also create the um, the uh, necessary files and necessary settings uh, to be able to uh, set this on the on the urban airship platform. Alex, and can you explain a little bit what is the feature? Because I think that not everybody. The feature knows. is uh, okay. I will show the result. Okay. So you will be able to see what is the feature. Let me see, let me show it. Okay. So let's start. If you can see my screen, the feature is to receive this kind of push notifications. This is the video with the the the, the player inside that play in the video. This is the uh, an animated GIF that has been received within the uh, push. This is a still image, okay? And uh, the next one is audio, a file that included inside the push, and you can uh, hear the, uh, the, uh, the music. And each one of them, you can push on it and open the app, 
or um, or uh, just leave it and uh, it will uh, continue to appear on your uh, notification center. Uh, when you are opening the app, it, it, it can actually do um, some actions according to the urban airship ability, capabilities. It can, uh, the, the push itself can enable, can have uh, additional uh, um, traditional uh, features like buttons that you can set. Uh, it can be enabled on the urban airship uh, itself that you can send it with specific uh, um, uh, fun, um, options that's supposed to open the app or supposed to go uh, outside the app like uh, open, to open some web URL, but uh, it, uh, like an action that you can perform on, uh, on uh, uh, push notification. Uh, this is included in uh, the new release SDK, so uh, um, it is just needed to, uh, to set this, uh, this uh, keys for Urban Airship platform uh, for uh, the the enterprise and the store uh, app there. And uh, for the store builds, it, uh, there is some process that uh, we also have the documentation for it, uh, for it and uh, uh, someone who needs the uh, pushability in the store uh, can follow it and uh, create what is required uh, to be able to have it in the store. And that's it. It will. It is enabled in uh, 10.2.0. No, the, 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 the iOS. Okay. It is in a, a mostly. It can be seen in a, in iOS uh, 10, but uh, we had uh, some checks and we saw that the images. That uh, that are attached to the uh, push notifications, like you can, like uh, you can see here and the on the right side, uh, they are not appearing on iOS 10. So we we can see them appearing only on iOS 12. So the push can be received. Uh, it can include the content, but the content is not appearing on the on this uh, push notification uh, when we are getting them on the device. And also uh, to, to be able to uh, to be able to see these uh, videos on or audio on or image, the device should should have an option for 3D touch, and this is uh, <coughs> available from from iPhone 6 Plus and uh, and and uh, 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 6 Plus 7, 8, and 10. That's it. It looks great, Alex. Uh, I want to say one thing. Uh, um, there is a reason why we started today with this, uh, what we call the on-call team. Um, the work that Alex and Alex from Israel been doing for the last four months probably, and the work that we are doing more rotation on the Android side, which was done by Alex, is not acknowledged maybe, I think, uh, but they're doing a lot of work, which is dealing with the less sexy things like bug fixing and resolving issues that are very complicated. And on top of that, they are able to release the stable SDKs and also doing extra tasks. So I really would like to say thank you for, uh, for Alex in Israel that basically this is what he's been doing for the last I think three or four months, and also for Alex this cycle. So uh, thank you very much for that. It's, I think it's a great job that is done. Thanks. We move on to uh, this is the next piece. TV, TV task so, okay. So to the TV. Uh, okay. Can you mute? Yeah, I'm muting myself. Move. I.O. Give me a second, I will share my screen. Ah, yes. There's also the download source code. Okay. Do you see my screen? <laughs> um, uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Anton, let's... Uh, Gil, you wanna... We skipped uh, one piece of work that Gil uh, did. So, okay. Gil, you wanna present it? 
Yes. Sorry, Anton. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so let me just share my screen for a second. One second. Can you see my screen now? No. 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 Now, yes. Okay. So, um, <coughs> So in order to allow uh, outsource developers to develop plugins, um, we now uh, added the button on the, on the app version to allow to build um, a development project that the outsource developers will be able to download and, and use it to develop uh, plugins without actually seeing our code. Um, I will show you how it looks on, on the web. One second. So when you build, um, it's not, <coughs> it's under feature flex, so it's not, uh, you won't be able to see it on your account, but on my, you can for now. So when you build a version that the SDK supports and you are defined as a plugin developer, you will see this um, this button. When you click it, you will have this checkbox, which is build development project. And when you build, it will build um, together with the debug or debug and release version that you uh, know how to build. It will also build a development project. Um, on the background, it will get built and on this screen, like downloading a debug version or release version, you will be able to download the development project. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's it. So the, the iOS part is done by Alex. Uh, I think it was on the previous cycle. Um, it will be connected, I hope, today, maybe on Sunday. Um, External developers will not need access to our repositories. Ah, okay. So Alex also mentions that uh, the outsource developers uh, won't uh, need any access to our uh, repositories whatsoever. So uh, they can just download it and use it. Uh, and the Android part, I hope that will be done next week. Um, yeah, and I guess that it will be announced. Uh, and everyone will be aware of it. And that's it. Questions? Okay. Um, yeah, I wanna say that one thing again to, as it's a kind of our, our team meeting, I wanna uh, say thank you to Gil that it was his first task doing work on our backend, on our CMS. So, um, and he's a natural, and he's a natural, yeah, exactly. So, thank you. We are building another person that is, uh, that is, a uh, full stack to, to be able to, to do tasks that are end to end. Thanks, Gil. Thank you very much. Thanks. Now, Anton, you can. Give me a second again. Hey, Anton, while you set up, can I just uh, say, wow, this is amazing. And I, we have to thank probably Deborah that's sitting in front of me. That little button that you showed has to go into the sales demo. There are a few things that we use in our, in our, in our demo, like when we show the plugin gallery. It's not really real, you know, because I can't really just like pick whatever plugin I want and build the app and it works. I mean, we're not 100% there yet. We're getting there but when we show what the system can do and how we think about it this particular button of download the code when there's a developer in the room that seals the cell it's, it's so important and I, and I think that it's such a small button that any salesperson would miss it and we you know we just hire a new salesperson I don't know where there's practically no way for them to know how important that button is unless we find a way to communicate from this meeting so it's something put it on a list on an important part it's a, and it's more than a button I know but it's but I'm excited about the, even the button so this is a great example it's a wonderful button 
Um, and this is why we need to do a really strong rollout process so that we are able to call attention to all of these things. Mm -hmm. And it's customers and it's sales training and it's sales decks. It's a lot of things. Bravo, sorry. Um, Anton then wanted to say some things, so let's uh, then save and uh, we can wait for a second. Okay. Um, so Ben, you wanna explain what were the objectives and what are the goals for uh, the TV team, basically, the cycle? Uh, Sure, I can do that now. Uh, so Apple TV, the aims for the current cycle were to add an analytics framework to support Google Analytics, uh, to incorporate the video player, and then to produce documentation and a simplified sideloading process to install the app. Um, on Amazon and Android, so somebody in the room's got a speaker up. Someone needs to turn off the okay. speaker. Yeah, I think it's okay now. Cool. Uh, so for Android and Amazon Fire, uh, the key goals were to add support for QuickBooks, test re like reusability of the Apple TV React Native components, and also Android Mobile React Native components. Um, this can be released, but associated React Native components need to be built. Mute the laptop as well. Um, Atanas also built the components needed to use the top nav and side nav grid screen in TV 2.0. Worked on a bunch of React Native mobile issues and also closed two tickets for the on call team. And Edward um, has been working on the ability for a region to create a debug version of a Samsung TV app using Zap. Zap will output the wrapper file and the P12 sign files, which are required for side loading and submitting the apps from Zap without needing to use Tizen Studio to import a file, to paste in URLs, to recertify it, and then output it, it should come out ready to go from SAP. Um, there should be no need for regions to do any additional development outside of SAP. It should all be produced within SAP, and we will provide sufficient documentation and support training so regions will be able to build a release app with our handhold of the AppliCast teams. And it's important to note that at the moment that WGT file is output to AWS and can be downloaded from AWS in SAP, but the next step will to be enable that to be downloaded through Hockey App. At the moment, when you hit download in Zap, you're getting it straight for out of AWS. On that note, I'll now pass on to the rest of the team to do the demos. Thank you. So now, Anton. Okay. Okay, so first I want to say is that uh, after a meeting, I will share this uh, small presentation each item in presentation that has underscore is a link and um, clickable. <coughs> so now we have like this uh, name of the cycle who's weird animals. So this one is Indian Arena. So let me start. So this uh, sprint we did mostly infrastructure work. So, okay. So for TOS SDK, we prepare infrastructure for release SDK with continuous integration. It means that uh, when we create a tag like on iOS and Android, we will build absolutely closed uh, SDK. Uh, second of all, we create uh, ability to release uh, versions from uh, release and debug. By the way, debug does not exist in previous TV SDK. Uh, let me explain a bit something interesting about it. So first you can see here released version. By the way, uh, after after this presentation, you can try to play with this SDK 6.0 and you can try to create your Apple T project. So it should work. Uh, here in this example, we have debug version and release version that uh, fully 
upload to Hockey App, so you can download it from here. Uh, release version is working from App Store Connect, or from sorry, from iTunes Connect, uh, like Apple. But for the back, we did uh, something else. For the back, we just releasing uh, SDK and Hockey. And uh, in presentation, we have the back build documentation. So we try and fully to describe how you can prepare the back build, uh, fully detail. So I believe even persons that not have uh, technology uh, knowledge uh, can do it by self. Basically, we just use an applica application configurator that you can download from uh, App Store, and such way you can connect. Uh, uh, to your TV. If you have a time, I will be glad if you can uh, play with it and give me a response how complicated it is for you. But at least with our team, we did some tests and everyone says it is pretty easy. Uh, another interesting thing, what I want to say, we uh, have something out of box. So for example, you can see here for the bug version, it's 1.6 megabytes. But uh, since we're using Bitcode that, um, fully uh, needed to, to implement with Apple TV. Apple, after we upload the build to iTunes Connect, Apple differentiates sizes by device. So in the end, you will go for, for example, if you will load Apple TV 4K, it will be 50 megabytes, and first generation, it will be 35. And this size is that you can see after installation, okay? So, let me go next. Then what we did, we create a Google Analytics plugin for TVS. Problem was that uh, Google Analytics itself uh, doesn't support uh, TVS framework. So what we have to do, we have to fully support measurement protocol, web, web API, that was created from zero. And uh, we check it, it works pretty good. So at that moment, this plugin is ready for use. Uh, we fully integrate unit testing for it. Also, we wrote uh, documentation with web for this uh, plugin that looks, uh, from my point of view, pretty good. You can see documented all methods. And uh, the, rep the rep itself, so uh, developers can look at it. So here I tried to make some kind of template what we want to see for plugins. So here is all documentation that relevant for plugin itself. This plugin documentation that I just show you, this reference for measurement protocol, submodels that is using, dependencies, test dependency, and how to create documentation that I just showed to you. Besides this, I did some, uh, this sprint, I did some other task. So, I prepare the plugins SDK and analytics SDK plugins that uh, exist in iOS. Now it also support in TVS that will enable us to reuse a lot of code that we have in this SDKs. Um, next, what I did, I'm testing some new mocking and stabbing uh, framework that we don't have, a, we don't have a lot of uh, as a framework that we can use for testing in iOS, so I try to figure out something that I can share with uh, developers that uh, they can use it. So these guys look pretty sexy, and I guess ne uh, next uh, tech talk, I will share how to work with it, and maybe I'll try, we'll try to push it uh, for the developers to start to work with it. And last one, I checked something uh, that's called Twist Swift Linter. So it helped us to support one um, code structure of a Swift for developers. So basically, Alex and I is checking and testing it now, and uh, if it will be okay, we will force all developers to use it. So we will have one code, one structure of Swift code. And last, what I want to show you, uh, how we can stop sharing. Okay. Do you see me at that moment? Yeah. Okay, let me move my screen. To Apple TV. Okay. <coughs> and this a full enterprise application that work without Xcode that we just can start it now with uh, QuickBrick. That's it. Do you have any comments or questions?
Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Great work. Uh, Francois is being quiet, but he was a big part of it. And so great work done. We are a little bit behind time, so I would like to jump to the Samsung part to it. You're muted, Ed. How's that? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let me share my screen. So, um, let's have a look on desktop. Where is, uh, yeah, so, um, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay, cool. So basically, the uh, the main the main task uh, uh, of this cycle for Samsung was to um, allow the uh, the user to uh, to generate um, the app in Zap, uh, have it build uh, uh, in in the Docker, uh, create the widget using the ties and CLI tooling, and package everything up, package up the app package up the widget um, and deploy them to a, a, a location that where they could be uh, accessed and then provide that link back to um, zap uh, and as you can see down here uh, at the bottom of the screen here now we have whereas before we didn't have a, a download uh, button we can now uh, download the uh, the widget as an archive if you're showing something I'm, I you I think you're sharing the Tizen Studio screen. So if you're... Uh, okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, well, in that case, sorry. This is what you want to see. Apologies. Down here, um, well, you can see my cursor? Yeah, that's it. So um, what we wanted to be able to do is, uh, you know, is uh, Tizen basically uh, has its own sort of unique process, as you know, all these platforms do, where you need to create an app, uh, provide certificates, uh, provide a uh, generate a profile, uh, et cetera, um, and then uh, package the app with the profile. And so, yeah, so that's what's, uh, that's what's going on now. I mean, the, the, one of the interesting um, things about the process that made it particularly difficult um, was that the, in the CLI tool, the certificate manager is actually broken. Uh, and you know you can see this documented online. Um, it just doesn't work basically. So you need to generate the certificates uh, in the GUI in the uh, Samsung Tizen Studio GUI, and then you need to um, uh, pair your uh, your studio with your developer account online manually and sign in uh, through a you know through a, a you know a pop up that it provides. And then once that happens, then it will generate your profile for you. Um, so that's all well and good, but unfortunately, the profile that it generates actually the profile itself has errors in it. Um, for example, the um, the string that is uh, a, a reference to the password for the profile uh, is it, it, it shouldn't be there. Um, what it turns out should be there, and this was just discovered really by trial and error, was the password itself uh, for your developer account at Samsung. So once um, uh, that was changed, uh, then the app was then able to be packaged uh, in, uh, uh, in Docker, and then it, everything became a lot, a lot more sort of straightforward, and I could send it, uh, so sending the app to uh, S3, obviously, and then, Packaging it all up and then sending the widget itself to uh, to S3 and then finally uh, sending the address of the widget, the path to the, where the widget can be downloaded to Zap and then Zap uh, basically that means you now have this button. So if you press this button now, what's going to happen is it's going to basically uh, um, download this file uh, and then. Uh, that file can then be installed on the TV if you have um, your CLI ties and CLI uh, tools installed. Then you can um, then you can basically uh, yeah, and, and your device is, uh, has a has a relationship with the uh, uh, with your studio. You can just install it via one command uh, ties and install, and then uh, the address of the widget. So um, yeah, that's that's what uh, that's what I was doing this cycle. That's what you can submit, right? 
Yeah, yeah, you can submit that. You can submit that to the uh, uh, to the Samsung um, store. It comes with the uh, it generates the author signing XML and uh, it's, it generates about four or five different files that are required in order to submit it to the store. So um, yeah, so you can go you can go ahead and uh, and submit that um, now. You know that's technically totally possible to do with this with this process. Um, the thing that I think uh, you know needs some love now i guess is the uh the app itself uh within uh you know within the within the package widget we need to uh give the give that some more love um because yeah i mean it you could submit the app but it would probably would not pass uh submission um but uh, that's that's my update Cool. Thank you very much, Ed. Thank you for the work. Atanas? Yes. Uh, so uh, this cycle for me was about uh, QuickBook uh, integration with Android TV and Amazon TV. And um, uh, it was... Um, can somebody... Uh, Ed, could you please stop sharing the screen? So oh, sorry. Yes, so uh, I had to add sports for a quick break on Android TV. And um, in my case, I was lucky because uh, most of the work has been done. So let me um, show. Yes, so like we support uh, a quick break on mobile and um, you can in install that on Android TV. Uh, but like there are a few uh, admin issues that needed to be done, so I changed uh, I changed um, um, a few settings, and now you can see the uh, the um, you can see the um, um, the app in um, in the device, and uh, you can launch it. Um, but it will look something like this. Uh, you can also interact with it, but this is not a TV, so. Um, uh, Generally, currently, Quick Break is supported on Android TV. You can build and release apps with Quick, Quick Break, but like uh, you need uh, um, external developers that will create the um, uh, components that would uh, work on TV. So the next thing that I did um, uh, was to take some of the code that is available from uh, for Apple TV. And uh, I uh, integrated one of the components exactly as it is. Um, I just had to fix something because um, the um, version of the uh, of React Native on uh, Android uh, is uh, lower. It's a bit old. So this is how it looks. It's uh, it's the so yummy app. So I did this manually. If you, if you want to build this, you can't. But like it was just to test uh, one component and see if it can be integrated with uh, no too little effort. So I managed to integrate it with a little effort, but there are issues like, uh, for example, um, it, it looks fine, but if you start playing with it, uh, you can see that, uh, for example, the offset is changing and um, at some point uh, the, um, the cells will stop appearing. Um, so it's, um, there's, it's, it's it basically it's difficult. It is difficult to create components for, or reuse components uh, uh, on Android TV that have been created for another platform. Um, there are reasons for that, but like uh, they, they're rather technical and uh, they can be discussed elsewhere. So um, the, um, one thing that will be uh, good to have is like to abstract out the code that is used on Apple TV so that uh, there's a common uh, place where I can do the pull request and uh, uh, also uh, change the script so that they can use uh, this version of Quick Break but not the mobile version of Quick Break. So this was um, my task for the cycle, but like I had some time and uh, I um, I worked on the um, side menu grid screen. So I, I, I want to show you what uh, was there. Um, it is um, it, it hasn't been rolled out yet, but uh, it is nearly uh, um, where I want it to be. So it's uh, 
It's using Zapn, a real, uh, a real app. There's only one stop. Uh, it is the uh, menu item, but everything else is real, um, like real data um, from coming from the CMS to DSP. So um, it is loading the uh, home collection. And now the what is in genre is the new one. So this is the, um, this is the screen. You can select the genres and then the, there'll be this animation and the new, oh, so sorry, drama is not here. Okay, let's see fantasy. Okay, the animation wasn't very smooth. This one should be better. Yes, <coughs> it's, uh, it's working now. Um, it is, um, it is uh, you can navigate to genre and then uh, back to the side menu and then to the content again. Um, um, I'm 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 really proud of what's uh, uh, what's there. It's um, you have to see it on TV. It's it's really smooth. One thing uh, I was tweaking the animation and it, it feels like uh, you're sliding uh, butter on hot piece of glass. But like um, we checked on Netflix and they had different animations and they they seemed more natural. So so I, I, I'd want to tweak them as well. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really in the end, and uh, in 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 a, in a few days, uh, I think I can uh, create the pull request uh, and integrate this uh, into the SDK. So that's me. Let me stop sharing. Thank you, Atanas. Thank you very much. Uh, another thing that Atanas was doing during the Saki is helping us solving two main issues that we have on the Android SDK. So also thank you for that. It's also took some time from the cycle. The main thing that we're trying to present here across the board is the fact that we are now using, or we proved we proved that we are able to use a quick break in all our platforms, and we still need to do more work in terms of where the shared code uh, will sit and uh, how we can uh, share common code between, and this is refinements that we're doing during the, during the cycle. So we don't have a lot of time, so we need to jump to the next. So thank you very much for this uh, team that did great work on top of the holidays that were in the middle and, uh, and some sicknesses that we had, unfortunately. Thank you. We move next to Yuli and Shimon. Yeah. Can... And Mona, that is not here, but was also part of this task force. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, okay. So um, the first step was, uh, it's actually the first step of the manipulating cell styles. Uh, and I will do a quick recap. Um, we all know cell styles are actually a combination of feed, entry in feeds with the cell style, and they're all rendered inside a component. And uh, one of the goals was to present the preview as much as we can uh, in the CMS. So we can see actually before uh, opening the device, how change of colors and fonts and other behaviors are affecting this thing. Uh, the, the key on the client side or the consumer side will be the master cell builder, which is actually already in place in a quick break, but uh, we only it's only a technical matter of doing some adjustments because we already sa saved the cell styles in the server and there is already uh, something ready, uh, especially in QuickBrick TV OS that can use, that is already using locally some uh, master cell builder. Um, so let's jump to the implementation. Uh, yeah, let's create uh, a new layout. Um, and let's target it for TV. And this is one of the new, new things. Again, many things are hidden in some uh, uh, feature flags, so don't fret about it. Uh, we, can uh, we are starting to use the cell style uh, builder uh, as a cell style framework. Um, nothing special so far. Please build, please, please work. Good, so uh, the Zap demo was created successfully. Yeah, so let's add to this home screen some uh, components, for example, the horizontal list. Um, and the new thing that we have here is 
you can select since it is a cell styles uh, uh, from taking taken from cell style builder you can select cell style from here oh what can i do i don't have any cell style so let's manage cell styles this is a new tab let's create a new cell style so cell style one this is from the top rail and let's just create another one just for the fun of it um, and this is where the magic comes in this is actually a real configuration of the cell style but we can only change the background color let's make sure let's make sure we can actually change the background color yeah it works so we have a cell style called cell style one is intended for the top rail and it has the background color of a nice red uh, something very important in tv apps is the focus on each element so we already provide the default uh, the, the default state and some focus state so the focus state is a nice orange no oh, i like it orange is nice so we have one cell style which is red and the other one is uh, some dark gray and we can use them so let's get back to the screen on horizontal list style for the top rail let's assign the cell style one for the top rail and that's it everything works on the same side at least <laughs> um so that's what we did and a bit more uh, also we can uh, uh, change various configurations still for the cell style for the cell style like description and duplicate cell style for each screen uh, and we have uh, but so that's what we have what we are missing is the implementation on the uh, quick, quick Shimon, can you show can you show the button the drop down where you can change all these uh, settings this one that's a drop down drop, drop down Duplicate and delete. Yes, you can delete it. Okay. Oh, important. You cannot delete a cell style that is being used in a uh, UI component, which is uh, something useful for preventing uh, user errors. So we try to provide as much as we can guards against user errors. So um, uh, we are very close to uh, using this, uh, these cell styles. Uh, in the quick big tv os uh, and I, I won't give i don't know when but this it is ready you have we already have a master cell implementation uh, in the quick big tv os as you can see the configuration is uh, very basic uh, okay shimon that's nice but uh, background color really that's all of you that you what you did well we did the infrastructure for adding more attributes inside so once we have one attribute we can start configuring another attribute if it is the font or padding and this will be done in the next cycle we'll have more and more attributes so the cell site can be used and actually we already for example support the font this is not some default font coming from the cms it's it, it is coming from the configuration um, the toughest nut to crack uh, will be the mapping of uh, data types to the cell style for example here we take uh, it, it is actually a real entry we uh, inject into we take the title and then we take the summary and this is one of the next things we will have to do the mapping of uh, from each which from each entry uh, mapping a certain part of the entry to uh, a place in the cell style um, that's it Thank you very much, Shimon and Yuli and Rona and also Gavri that took uh, that is being uh, on top of that. We don't have a lot more time, so I'm sorry I'm not elaborating, but this is like the, the I think it's the most complicated probably piece that uh, we needed to crack in order to to enable this cell style builder. We still have some other issues and some front end uh, UI that we will need to do to make it uh, very, very friendly. But uh, but uh, this is a 
the, a great first step in order to remove the need for self-styled development. Uh, like, uh, I believe that uh, next cycle, uh, we will be able to provide something that is really usable. We chose to do the TV, that the uh, team chose to do the TV because the cells are easier and we believe that we will be able to push it to production faster. So this is uh, the main reason uh, why the team chose that. But yeah, if I may, just on this, it doesn't really matter because the way we do it, if we get it on TV, we get it everywhere at yeah. once with the same feature anyway. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Just mentioning it uh, to understand what will be easier to put in production in terms of the amount of attributes. The infrastructure is there. There, there was a lot of work done on... So one thing to mention is that there is a collaboration between these two teams because the TV now is based on quick brick and the cell styles are building related to quick brick. So we are trying to create this funnel towards using every quick brick. Uh, once we will have that, it will be a very easy entry point to our mobile apps as well. So thank you very much for that. It's a uh, great work that was done. Um, we have two minutes. I'm sorry, it's always boss that doesn't have a lot of time, but I would like Boaz also to share about some work that was done in the automation part. Okay, I'm sharing. Just mute, mute you on your computer. Okay, can you hear me, see my screen, guys? Yes? Yeah. Good. Okay, uh, so let's let's see what we were doing in uh, Zap QA. So uh, it's not in the exact order, but that, that's the stuff we were dealing with. We added uh, another two uh, automatic tests to the Circle CI of iOS. Now it's important to mention, especially because of the first one, if in the previous cycle, Green and Alex uh, were working on uh, implementing the feature of per screen navigation test. So now we added the test that uh, navigates to two different screens in the app, in, in our QA app that's running in Circle CI and verifies on the screen that uh, the navigation bars buttons are different in the two screens, um, which is quite, you know, our uh, target, our objective to cover every new implementation covered with automatic tests. The next test was uh, quite simple. It was, it, it's doing a switching between a screen picker tabs and verifies that on every tab we are leading to the expected screen. Uh, we added the test plan for one of the most uh, important features in Applicaster from my point of view, which is the push not notification. It's together with uh, the work uh, we, just, we just saw of uh, Alex Root. And it will be now part of the Zap Sanity that we are doing for every released SDK. Besides that, we had uh, two releases of uh, SDKs. One, uh, two, two of them were, were iOS. Uh, uh, 10.2 and 10.2.0, um, but the main, uh, the, the main work that was doing, uh, and uh, this is it, that's shown here in this slide, is, was the alignment of the iOS automation test with uh, the Android platform. And it's kind of, it's a big milestone for the Zap UA. The meaning is that uh, every test that we are building today uh, it's, it's actually capable to run in both platforms, in both iOS and Android. It's, uh, and um, uh, the, 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 the next thing to do, it, it's, uh, was, it's the same thing that we did in iOS. We will add it also in uh, Zap Android Circle CI. It means that on, on every pull request, the test will run, uh, will run and uh, verify that everything uh, works correctly and nothing damaged. The task uh, was divided into two ste three steps. Uh, <coughs> we did the, I developed the automation plugin. Automated, the automation plugin actually enables you to run a test. I mean, uh, run test. I added the, added the accessibility IDs that, that needed uh, for running those tests and actually passed the test. Now, um, so this is the output of this of this uh, major task. I mean, all the tests that you see in front of you here are now available for uh, Android platform. And uh, hopefully from next SDK, we will have it running on every pull request, uh, which is quite, I mean, quite impressive. Uh, and last thing I want to share uh, is some comments about the work that I was, uh, the, the, some uh, interesting thing that I found during the work of it. 
during the, the, the during the verification of the test, I revealed four blockers issues in in the Android. Um, and uh, usually, when you do automation for multi-platform, uh, for multi-platform, it involves in adding a lot of if-else of what o what OS we're working on, if we are Android, if we are iOS. But in our case, because we uh, manage it uh, and uh, design it uh, very well, there was no need for asking those questions if you are running against Android or running against iOS. All the tests are, are clear with no dirt inside and with no differentiate between iOS and Android. It's quite smooth. Besides uh, stuff that we see only in Android, like the dialog screen when you launching the app for the first time. And uh, the most, uh, I mean, this is quite great milestone. All the tests run successfully on first try. That it's amazing. I was, during the weeks working on automation, uh, you see lots of, uh, um, I mean, the, the first time you try it, it never works, but this time, I mean, it all was all working smooth. And uh, that's it, basically. And if you want, I mean, you know what, we have another minute, uh, what do you think? We are out of time. Okay, I'll show you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because there are no objections, it will go smooth. Uh, this is the Android simulator, the planches, uh, scrolling into the dialog screen. Hopefully, press the continue button. Ah, yeah. Government. The uh, plunge will now navigate in the side menu. And of course, all the logs you see here, you can also see in, uh, in the circle, navigates to uh, the advertising screen. It will wait until 10 seconds until the interstitial banner will show up. We'll verify that the interstitial banner is showing, we'll dismiss it. And now it will verify that we have the component banner, inline banner, and bottom bar banner over here. You can see it over here in the logs. And the test pass. Thank you. That's a milestone. Thank you very much, Boaz. Just, just something. Uh, so uh, we are improving the process of QA due to this need. So again, it's... Uh, the framework is not flexible to be tested on any app, but basically we create a much faster process of uh, finding issues and blockers. So we have, I think, running like 15 test cases or something like that, right, Boz, on each one of the platforms that are running, yeah. that are running on each pull request that any developer in the company is pushing. So basically... It, it is the accurate. It's not for every app because every app has its own... own no, run. I know. It's for a, for a master app that we built, but it helps us at least in our centralized uh, testing process. It helps us uh, verifying that our basic features are working, that the apps are running. And now we have it on both platform. Uh, um, so, and again, Boz is doing it while doing all the manual QA and managing uh, flaws and all this. So the developers are less happy with this process because he finds many more bugs, but uh, uh, but uh, basically I would say that the KPIs of Boaz are really, that his tests are really finding bugs and saving us to pay money to applause and also saving us time internally. Um, that's it, we are like really ahead of time, but I wanna thank everybody in the team for the hard work that was done as always. Um, we one thing to mention is that this cycle was longer. Uh, like in reality, it was not longer because of the holidays, but we are now trying cycles that are four weeks of work. So they are longer cycles uh, to be able to do a better rollout and a better uh, planning and uh, implementation process. So this is something that we keep on testing internally in the team of how to work properly. 
Um, another thing to mention, and as I mentioned before in the beginning of the conversation, uh, we have the Trello board uh, that is called the uh, Zap Cycle Feature Rollout, uh, where you can see exactly where each task, uh, w w which column each task uh, belongs to, what we are rolling out, what is in development, what was released or pending release for some reason. And also you can see what we didn't do that we thought that we would do during the cycle. Um, which is also important. Also, you can, if you have questions on the tickets, you can comment on them. And uh, if there are some errors or mistakes, let us know. Uh, you do, it, this, is, this is for the things that are being rolled out. All the things that are being released, it's a bug. But during the process, if you have any question or thought, use it to comment and uh, we'll answer. Yep. Um, so yeah, thank you very much everybody uh, for your time and thank you very much for the team for the uh, really hard work with a lot of accomplishment with, uh, with tough uh, objectives, I would say, but uh, I think that in general we made it. Our goals were to be able to release versions in Zap on TV and to give the foundation for cell styles and uh, to connect them to our quick break. So. I think that uh, we made what we planned generally. So really, you did great work. So thank you very much. And we will share this video for whoever wants to rewatch it or, uh, or to re-understand something that was not understood. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.